Hey everybody, today we're going to be talking about the difference between MIDI compression and audio compression on an instrument track. We're going to keep this one really short today. I don't think this has a super amount of depth, but I did want to point this out because some of you might be using a normal compressor on an instrument track when really you should be using the velocity processor that comes in the MIDI effects. And this does compression of MIDI data. So what's the difference? I've got this bass part in this song. I'm going to push play and you're going to see both of them have little things pop up on them. Only one of them right now is actually doing anything and that's the audio compressor. So here's the, the issue with MIDI. MIDI, when it triggers an instrument like this bass part, it is a group of audio files that are samples. And if you trigger it with a higher velocity, that means you're pushing that key faster, which translates into harder, which translates into louder. Well, it goes between different velocity layers of that sample. So if you play it hard, it's going to trigger a sample that has a different sound to it. It was recorded with a bass player playing harder or louder, and so it has a different attack. Well, with a compressor, it's going to still have all of that sound. So it'll have the attack, but it may be turning it down. And this is very similar to if you were playing like a, a bass in a studio and you played it a certain way and you use a compressor, it would do it the exact same way. It would kind of turn it down, but you would still have that loudness or that the timbre differences. But sometimes with MIDI, what we want isn't to just turn it down. We want to actually have the part be played as if it was being played not as loud. So if we want that, say we want a, a different performance style from our MIDI, then we want to actually use the velocity processor because what that's going to do, it's going to analyze the data coming in, it's going to change the data, and then that data will trigger the bass, and it may never ever get to that loudest performance sample layer. So, come through. We got up our ratio, adjust our threshold, So now it's never getting up to 127 or even close, still have some of the feel. So the velocity are still changing. It means if you play a little bit louder, it's going to get a little bit louder still. If it's played a little softer, it's still going to get a little bit softer, maybe not to the same degree, but this way we have more control while keeping it out of perhaps the loudest velocity layers of our sample. So we control it first here and then we can still use this other compressor if we want to, or we could actually just turn it off for a little bit and see how it sounds. But knowing that we're not going to be boosting up parts the, of the attack or reducing parts of the attack that we didn't want there in the first place. Okay, so you can use the two in, together. You can use them one or the other. Um, there's really no rules with this. It really just depends on what you want. If you want to have a different performance, I use the velocity processor. If I want to keep the same energy and everything of the original that I have, then I use a compressor. If I want to do both, then I use both. Okay, I hope this tip was helpful for you. Just, uh, again, not too long of a tip, but uh, something that's been on my mind. I use this quite a bit back and forth. Hope you're having a great week, and we'll do another video soon.